So let's look at this uh, this particular battle then. So this is the Battle of Fisher's Hill and it's in September, end of September 1864. So you're looking northwards at the moment uh, and there's a fortified line, a somewhat fortified line of uh, the Confederates here, uh, uh, the, the rebels along here uh, on uh, the hills. The Union Army here, this was a retreat position for the Confederates after um, I believe it's the Third Battle of Winchester um, and they are quite weak so uh, these units here um, you can see these regiments are not certainly not full strength um, uh, they they vary from sort of four steps down to one in a lot of cases and despite that it's still a, a formidable position uh, this historical scenario is uh, concerning what Sheridan did to unhinge this this defense line and is using these brigades here of the Army of West Virginia uh, which was associated with the Army of, of the Shenandoah which is the, uh, the, the Union Army here and uh, they infiltrated the mountains up uh, uh, here got a little north mountain here they infiltrated round and they attacked from this direction uh, and it unhinged the line. As I said before, I, I think uh, this is a kind of a one-sided, it's almost like a Barbarossa type um, situation where uh, one side's attacking, one side's defending. So on solo play, it, it, it's, it, it, it works uh, better than the sort of backwards and forwards, if you like. So, um, but the victory conditions are very tough on the Union. Um, they really need to blow the uh, Federates off the board almost. Um, they get uh, points for actually uh, exiting or capturing the point of the Valley Turnpike, which is this turnpike here, which is the main road down the valley. And I'm wrecking brigades of the, uh, of the, uh, of the Confederate Army. So there's a lot of work for the Union to do, and I think that works uh, uh, solo, solo quite well. With the Union, we have one core, the Sixth Corps, which is spread from here up to here, uh, with some supporting artillery, which has been signed from the Army. Uh, we have uh, two brigades here. Uh, we have uh, two here, one here, two brigades here. Then this area here is the 19th Corps, and uh, so they're all quite bunched up around the, the valley here. Uh, this river here, the North Fork of the Chenda River, is, is uncrossable. Um, so that, that, that area is effectively out of the game. But finally, up here we have um, a cavalry uh, division, two brigades up here as well. Uh, and that's, that's the Union Army. There is no reinforcements either side. What, what's here is what you get. Uh, one particular thing about this game is that it's not very long, so it's only four turns long. Uh, starts at four o'clock in the afternoon, ends at seven. Um, so uh, a lot of uh, a lot of intense stuff has to happen in those turns. On the Union side, we have what they, what's known as the Army of Virginia. Here uh, we have three divisions here: um, Ramsey's division, Pegram's division, Gordon's division, and Wharton's division. And the color coding shows you. That Gray, sort of this dark green, the purple, and the and the sort of scarlet, with some supporting artillery, uh, and then up here, this end, this is actually dismounted cavalry. Um, so this is a cavalry division under Lomax, um, with a little bit of horse artillery and uh, dismounted cavalry units. And generally, cavalry units are a lot smaller than infantry units, so um, these are quite small units. And this is the um, the area, of course, where the initial attack, uh, this is the Army of West Virginia, uh, led by Crook, um, sweeps on. It, it's going to work with an outflank here going, and it's just going to be in interesting to see how the Confederates can survive uh, this. It, it's a, an army that retreated from a battle that it lost, and so therefore it's had losses, etc. And um, the Confederates just don't have any more troops. So um, that's the situation. Let's start with um, what's known as the in initial turn. So before the, uh, the 1600 turn formally starts, what we have is we have a special turn where these 
two divisions uh, of the uh, two brigades each of the Army of West Virginia have two activations, special activations on their own. Nothing else on the board has an activation. We only use uh, two chits of each of those uh, divisions. Uh, this is the divisions of Thoburn and Hayes, um, and we've got those markers ready to go. And that's what we'll put in the cup first. So we have this initial attack. Uh, what we will note on the um, efficiency here. So on the on the Union side, the infantry they have a permanent efficiency of four for the game. So we don't pick an efficiency chip for those. However, we do for the cavalry. So the cavalry there, there was uh, there was some doubt uh, apparently in Avril's mind that uh, this this plan would work and that cavalry would be any use in this hilly terrain. Um, so therefore, there's not the sort of full buy-in into this planned attack by Sheridan. On the Confederate side, though, uh, of course, uh, we need to pick the efficiency chits. And uh, for the efficiency chits for the um, Confederates, we have, I think it is, yeah, four threes and three twos. So there's not a huge amount of variability here. The Confederates won't not have active, uh, you know, a decent amount of activations here. Uh, Early himself has um, has an efficiency rating as well, which helps, uh, which is pretty good. The efficiency chits that we have for the Union here, which are only for the cavalry, are complete uh, across the board. So a one, two, three, and a four could be, could be anything. So that's very random for the cavalry. Anyway, that's uh, that's enough of the uh, the battle. Um, let's uh, let's get on on and fight it. Okay, so let's crack on here. Um, we have our four brigades here, Coates, Duval, Wells, and Harris. Yeah, first and second of the second division, which is Hayes, and first and third of uh, the first division, which is Thoburn. So we enter from here, and uh, this special turn, we start off with four chits in the cup, um, two for each of those divisions. Uh, also, there are some uh, scenario special rules about this uh, cavalry uh, division for the Confederates in that uh, the first time a Union unit within this initial attack comes adjacent or fires on a Confederate unit the entire division takes a disorder check a UDD. Also uh, second disorders for this division in the first uh, couple of turns including the initial attack uh, if they fail a second disorder result, they automatically route. It doesn't matter for what reason. Um, that's a, an auto route uh, for them as well. Not for the uh, Confederate infantry, but just for this uh, for, for the cavalry here. There is also a plus one to shot combat against them. This is due to the complete surprise that this flank attack. Let's uh, pick out the first chit to work with. We have uh, the second Army of West Virginia. So the second is Duval and Coates, Hayes' uh, division here. Now that's the smaller of the uh, brigades, although uh, we do have seven, seven effectiveness uh, units here in Coates's, so uh, it's probably useful for them to lead the attack. And of course, um, we need to pick uh, the orders they'll be under. And because this is, of course, wooded here, even though it's downhill, um, it's too movement point to each hex. If we were on attack, uh, it would be very difficult for any of the brigades to actually get to the Confederates because of course they'll be halved movement and their movement is six and so it'd be three so they'd get to move one hex. Uh, they will initially start on, uh, on, on advance orders. Uh, there is again with this sort of special initial turn, um, there's the capability um, once per activation for a division to change its orders without reference to brigade um, order change table. So um, it will be an automatic change. So I think the idea is that uh, you start on advance, get into a position, and then with your second activation, you will then change to attack and be able to engage. So we will initially be on advance, which we don't mark, and we'll start with Coates' brigade, which is gonna be closest to the line here, I think, because they're gonna be uh, providing the main impact here. So uh, I think if we stack these regiments, um, eight, uh, there'll be 10 and, and 11 um, strength points. Um, and let's do the advance here. 
so uh, what we'd like um, if we look here the earthworks cover this direction um, whereas what we'd like to do is get behind so uh, if we go uh, two four and of course with the advanced order uh, we can't actually go into the same hex so uh, if we say move to there for six and uh, we do the same thing here uh, we'll move them like that uh, with uh, coats um, I think on the far wing so it's got around that hook uh, here uh, for the attack um, and then Devol um, if we can move forward here now we have this Confederate cavalry unit here which could react and um, actually with that move here could actually uh, with withdraw so um, and of course the thing is is that when you retreat uh, and you do a reaction movement you have to take a UDD of course the second failure means a route but that cavalry does really need to get out of the way uh, and of course the the confederates when they're mounted they don't actually have a weapon type they're only useful for shot combat for, uh, for cavalry charges so again it's not really um, very useful as it is at the moment uh, so we will try and uh, retreat uh, this unit to hexes uh, we will uh, we'll pull it back uh, maybe to there uh, I think um, yeah let's pull it back to there uh, and we'll roll it's a cohesion check it's a six oops uh, <laughs> pick the cup with the jits in nice one uh, rather than using the second cup. Uh, so one is fine, Hit they're fine with doing that. Um, okay, so now we move to Vol. Uh, and again, it's a similar sized um, brigade here, uh, but it has uh, a lower quality unit. Um, so what we will do is uh, we will stack them again in twos, two, four, six, I think, and two four six coming here so this could trigger another retreat of that brigade but i think we're okay for the moment um devol here and we'll bring Hayes on at the same time uh and i think we might bring crook on as having been coming in with those with with that unit okay so that's that division done so we pick another chit and uh, make sure i pick the right cup and what do we have? Oh, we have them as well, uh, them again. So um, they were obviously in the vanguard. Um, so now what we can do is we can do our brigade uh, order change automatically to attack. And um, then so we will move on. I think Crook actually doesn't come on. I think he stays uh, for the moment. He, he will move because he's a corps commander independently of uh, the units around him. So if we're looking at an attack for Coates and also in an attack for Duval. Um, <clears throat> okay, so uh, let's start uh, on the outside in. If this is attack now, then uh, what actually should, should this be? I suspect this should still be advanced actually because we've only got that um, Confederate unit worried about and we need to keep moving. So uh, yeah, we'll keep with advance for uh, Duval, Duval's brigade. So let's move one, two, three, four. So he's not going to get an activation to attack now. So let's go uh, this direction. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we'll only move the five here so we keep in contact with the rest of the brigade, but it's there ready to attack. Um, but with coats here, we can attack. So we'll go one, uh, go one, two to here, and one, two to here for the combat. So we've moved adjacent. Therefore, all of these brigades need to do um, uh, a disorder uh, check, uh, which I'll do off camera. It's going to be boring to watch. So we completed that. Uh, it was quite quite a bit. It's it's actually a plus two. Um, to sort of ch uh, check as well. Um, McFarland's brigade actually did quite well. Um, I think there was only uh, a unit here underneath and these two units here, everything else was uh, uh, actually passed. Smith's 
brigade um, failed completely. They're all disordered, and quite uh, and a bit of Thompson's uh, as well. Johnson and uh, McFarland mostly got away with it, uh, and also this unit also disorders as well. Um, so now we've done that disorder. As we're on the attack chip, we could now we've moved. We can fire. The first thing that will happen is they can change facing one vertex. The defenders face that way. Now the Confederates can fire. Now, in, interestingly, if we want to do the shock with firing, we could force them to rout, uh, which is fine. But then we can't shock. Um, but also, if we shock, um, it, they can retreat before shock and if they retreat before shock we can enter the hex but we can't shock anymore um, it's a difficult choice of what to do I think we will fire uh, and we will fire here from the flank it's not just the top unit but the first seven strength points are can fire so uh, you can be firing seven lots of sevens so here we have a seven I think this still does cover the earthworks so you do still still get the earthwork defense here um, with a minus one on um, the defense, uh, but it's seven strength points. It's rifles uh, firing, so uh, it's a plus one at range one. Also, it's prepared fire because it's one range um, for infantry. Um, so that's plus two, but minus one for the uh, 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 earthworks. And it's flanking fire, so that's another plus one. Uh, so we end up with plus three, minus one, so it's a plus two uh, attack. Five, so that's a seven. A seven for seven small arms is an automatic um, disorganized for the top unit. So that is already disorganized, so an automatically second disorder, but for this uh, particular period, that's an automatic route for uh, the 39th Tennessee. So that's taken off the board and put in the routed units box. Because of the disorder from fire, uh, of the top unit, this also takes a, a disordered check as well, but just an, a normal one. We get a two, so they they are, are okay for the moment, and that's our seven strength points from here. Uh, we'll do the seven strength uh, seven strength points from here as well. So plus one for rifle, plus one for prepared. Um, uh, we don't have the flank and minus one for the earthworks. Uh, so it's a plus one uh, on the seven chart. A nine. So gives us a one D. So that's it's only one step unit, so that's actually eliminated. And as you can see, we've got nothing left in here, so we don't we haven't got any shock to do. That's their activation done. Uh, we could do some long range firing here. Uh, into the McFarland hex, I suppose. Um, it's three hexes with rifles, uh, a minus two. So we could do a seven strength point minus two. I think we might as well. Uh, let's do that seven minus two, and it's a flanking shot um, because, of course, they're all facing this way. So it's a minus two, that's a minus uh, one. Decent shot, seven minus one. Three going to a two on seven is a D minus one. So uh, the top unit here, uh, it's a minus one to the dice roll. Uh, and also, of course, uh, their six is boosted by McFarland. So it's a D minus one versus seven. Oh, that is a seven. D minus one, so that's a six. Uh, so they're okay with that. With um, this unit here from here, um, I don't believe we actually have line of sight because we're flat ground to here and then it drops uh, a level. There is LOS here um, because uh, halfway here, because it's a gradual slope, there's only one slope change uh, in this. Um, halfway is effectively uh, assigned to be closer to the higher unit, so therefore there is LOS. So that's uh, minus one um, uh, for the uh, for the distance uh, for rifles, but a plus one um, for the flanking fire. So another seven strength points to fire here. A four, four comes out as D is uh, a disruption check for the first Tennessee. 
at one, they're fine with that. Uh, they can't return fire because of course, well, they're, they're facing the wrong direction. So that's uh, the um, first division over with its activation. So all we have left is the uh, first division, uh, Wells and Harris uh, under Thorburn. So um, we'll bring uh, these on under advance. So that's the first chit, and of course the second chit is these guys again. Uh, now, if they go on attack, um, they're still not going to be able to get to the uh, Virginia. So um, what we'll do is we'll we'll stay on advance, I think. So I think possibly at this point we will try and get this guy to uh, reaction uh, from here because um, in the up in the next turn he, he's going to have uh, real problems if uh, the chits are pulled from here, and um, so we might as well uh, retreat now. I think so. Uh, we will retreat to probably to there, and we'll do our disorder and hope they don't rout. Ah, fortunately there you do. Okay, so they're taken off into the routed units box. Uh, and that really kind of frees up this uh, this big sweep um, completely, which is unfortunate for the Confederates. Maybe he should have stayed, stayed in place. So that's actually the initial attack turn done. Um, we will then go on to the normal 1600 turn from now on.